I no, I was actually I compared him to Leatherface, and I think Leatherface is worse. Yeah, I think Leatherface is worse. He's m- more malicious. Now, I I think this guy is uh, I think he's a Frankenstein character for sure. I think he's a sad state, and um, he never had a fair shake. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. As of this recording, it is October 4th and most likely really hot wherever you live. I think everybody's dealing with a little bit of a a heat wave right now, and it's it's messing with me because I'm ready for it to be Halloween time, dude. I'm tired of these. I grew up in the Midwest, and we either had blizzards on Halloween time, which is obviously in the wrong direction. And then here in Arizona, sometimes it doesn't cool down till November, which is you know, hot Halloween doesn't work for me either. So uh, that stuff you see in the movies, I think it's why I'm so attracted to movies that capture the Halloween vibe yeah. so well, because it's what I wish I had, because we never really get it. It's the same reason why you love those Christmas movies that portray like the Hallmark Christmas. You never have Christmases like you have in every holiday movie. All these movies, it's covered in snow and everybody's, you know, decorating, decorating. And it's just I it's just not that way. I mean, nobody decorates their houses anymore, man. And I will say my neighborhood is starting to get blown up with Halloween decorations. People are all about it over here. Yeah, I haven't really put anything up. Uh, I'll probably put meh, maybe a few things up, like one of those blow up ghosts or something like that. My kids will probably want to throw that up. But uh, mm. a shout out to the people that are affected by the uh, hurricane as well, because that I've been looking at that, man. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a real bummer. Uh, so. I don't know. Did Elon get you anybody listening that's in from that region by chance? And I have no idea. Like, where is everybody being put up? And did Elon get everybody Internet? Is that what he did? I think Space so. Link? Starlink. Starlink. Uh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I, we, I couldn't believe how many how many states was affected by that, man. And mm. the videos coming out of that is just freaking heartbreaking. So the the sit the town in North Carolina, uh, that's my dad's dad was from there. That was oh, really? Town. Yeah. The one that got just leveled. Oh, but um. If anybody happens to be in those regions and you're listening, we're thinking about you. Let us know. Absolutely. I'm very curious how uh, that everybody's all right. But down with the negative stuff. Let's yep. talk about the positive. We are going to be doing Funhouse. This is one of Riverman and I our favorite movies for the season. It's interesting because it's not even about Halloween, but there's just something about it. Something about freak shows and fun houses and fairs remind me of fall time. Strikes and, the chord. Yeah, and even though it's not Halloweeny, you got two-headed cows and goat boys and all kinds of crazy stuff. It feels very Halloweeny, man. Um, so let's go ahead and watch it, and then uh, we'll, we'll try and drop some facts. I don't know if Todd's got a lot of stuff he wants to you know bust out about the movie, but a lot of stuff to talk about with it because it's just a classic. So um, not sure where it is. Todd thinks it might be on Peacock. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. We're gonna go ahead and get started though. In three, two, one, play. Just kicking off with the Universal logo. Old school Universal. <clears throat> Hopefully, it doesn't have two Funhouse. Two of these things, dude. Like the last movie, like the Kills in the Crypt. It shouldn't. This is ripped off the DVD or Blu-ray. So, so. Which film was this of Toby Hooper's? Like in order, like where. It, you know what he had already i know he had already done texas chainsaw he had done texas chainsaw 2 i take it what had he done at this point um so let me pull up let me pull up his uh directorial filmography i first of all i have to say i love this intro oh it is it's great amazing it sets the tone the music is yeah yeah it's creepy dude and it's like marionettes and clowns, dude, and old women on rocking horses. It is creepy stuff, dude. Very, very, very effective. Okay, so we got, uh, of course, Texas Chainsaw, 1974. Then Eaten Alive is 1976, mm. which I love Eaten Alive. Um, that's great. Then he did The Dark. Uh, I don't know if I ever saw The Dark. And then Salem's Lot. Uh, he did two episodes. What, that's the miniseries. And then he did The Fun House in 81 so coming off of the salem's lot tv miniseries Mm. so he did poltergeist after this or did poltergeist which is still a joke i mean come on it's like did he do it or not i mean do you think he did it i have no clue man 
is it like one of these Nightmare Before Christmas deals where you know uh, what Henry Selick directed it, but it everybody thinks Tim Burton did because it looks like Tim Burton and he produced it. It's got his stamp all over it, but it's like he technically didn't do it, but you know he was there all the time, like just micromanaging everything. And some people might think that they can tell like a Toby Hooper movie from each other. Uh, I can to an extent, but it's kind of difficult for him as of. It, it would be hard to to pin his style on Poltergeist because it's just a studio film. Yeah. Even if it it feels more like a Steven Spielberg, I, I would buy it as a Steven Spielberg movie if I didn't know any better than a Toby Hooper. But a Toby Hooper, it could be too because. When these when these genre guys take on studio projects, they kind of neuter them, mm-hmm. and they don't really feel like them anymore because it's just a for hire gig. I can't think of too many examples where maybe that's the exception. I mean, I haven't watched any of those shitty like Eli Roth cash grabs, but maybe there's like Eli Roth isms in Borderlands and all these crappy Hollywood movies he yeah, tries to do. And I, I never, I wouldn't know that. Um, so we're we're jumping into the um. The Halloween homage Hall- to Halloween and Psycho and Psycho, which is cool. Um, you have Amy, Amy the sister, and you have getting, you have Amy the sister getting naked, and is like her little brother, who's obviously horror obsessed. Joey in his bedroom, dude, he's just perving on his sister hardcore, dude. I it's, just, I, it's creepy, man. Yeah, the way he does that. Uh, I I love this this intro though. I think it's fantastic. I love how they the the black glove killer, and then of course. Amy's not bad looking either. So. Well, we were talking about this in the last episode, but this is from those days where they could show actresses portraying teenagers yeah. <laughs> and show them naked in gratuitous like nude scenes because she's clearly in high school and they don't specify. I don't think they specify what grade they're in, but we don't see her necessarily driving the car. The only one driving the car is the older dude. I'm going to say she's probably 16 because that's kind of like the, that age they, you know, I'm just going to say that's a nice middle. They're age portraying story. it, but yeah, she's like 19 in this Elizabeth. Uh, yeah. Barrett, but they're portraying yeah. her as I'm going to guess a 16 year old. Yeah. I feel like she could, I feel like they could say she was a freshman and I wouldn't, I would buy it. So it's kind of weird how they skirted the ethics in these movies back then. Uh, because look, is this gratuitous? Yeah. Do they have to show this? No, <laughs> they could have cut around this. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm glad they did show it though. <laughs> you get to dude it's funny the letterbox cuts off um uh the fortune teller's tits oh you, when she like gets naked she's getting strangled yeah. dude, like her tits are completely cut off by the the but you know if the letterboxes were gone you'd see them mm-hmm. and it's just like oh okay they, they they deprive us of the old sleaze bags tits dude fun bags dude yeah come on i want to see those so those sandbags. You, said this was, you said this was you said this is 81 81 yep so isn't that funny that Halloween had only been out for three years and they were already trying to pay homage to it? Yeah. It, it was a huge movie. It was mm-hmm. the biggest independent movie of all time. I don't think it is anymore. I think it got trounced by something like Paranormal Activity or something something like that. Maybe even like Blair Witch. I don't know. But but Halloween was the biggest independent uh, blockbuster of all time. So three years into it, we're already paying tribute. Joey has all these uh, fake prop uh, weapons in his room hanging up, which is cool. And he's going to scare his sister here. It's she, just she's soaping up. The, the, <laughs> the gratuitous is Sophie, yeah. Sophie rack, dude. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And then we got the psycho, even down to the music and, mm-hmm. you know, the, the camera angle here and the way she's screaming. And first of all, if why did it take her so long to, to realize react? it was fake? Yeah. Why? is Because it's going along with the psycho thing. But look, even now, even now, I think it's and, obvious. Unless it's he missed on purpose. No, I I think, dude, he's literally looking at her puss. He is right there. That is weird, dude. Dude, he's like stabbing her Creepy. right at her navel. He's like a foot away from her, and he's like trying to jab her in the fucking gas. He's going to turn and, into Michael Myers, man. And what kills me is she doesn't really make that big of a deal. I mean, she makes a big deal of it because she's like, I'm going to get you back. But she that's a dummy dude that's crazy this kid is messed up they set up this kid like he's gonna be a bigger deal than what he is and he's really not yeah uh but i mean he has a fall under to the carnival and stuff but uh, does he really amount to no not really he's not really i don't think he really amounts to much but 
she doesn't make a big deal after this. She goes downstairs and she's waiting for a date. I'd be like, Mom, Dad, this fucking kid, he he just sexually assaulted me in the shower, essentially. He is weird. He's only like, what, seven or eight? I mean, come on. Uh, is he? You I think don't, he's 10? I, I have no idea. I think he's not seven or eight. That would imply he's like in the second grade. This kid, Look at this kid. He's got horror movie memorabilia. This kid is 10 at least, dude. Ten at least. If not yeah, 11. he does have a lot of a lot of cool posters in it. He's not second grade, dude. This kid is like in the sixth grade. This kid's fucked. He's our. Already... He's a. He has a cool freaking room though, dude. I love when they show. Oh, they're watching Bride of Frankenstein. The parents. Yeah, which is you got to put it. In. It's a Universal property. They always got to throw Bride of Frankenstein in their movies, dude. I. And uh, you know their parents completely hateable. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I think the dad sucks, dude. You better not be going to that carnival. And the mom's a token drunk, which is funny. And I, 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 first of all, I love this kid. Where first of all, she's not supposed to be going to the carnival. She lies and says she's going to a movie. And the little little bastard, little perverts up there, like liar. Yeah. But what, what? Do you not owe her one? Like, why you feel like you got to get her? I don't like, know. You just, you literally. It, when this kid grows up, I would think if he if he flies straight from here and he grows up to be a normal person. You got to imagine eventually there's going to be an awkward Thanksgiving where Big Sis is like, hey, you remember that time when you were like way too old to be doing stuff like this and you basically sexually assaulted me in the shower? Do you remember that? Yeah, he saw like, me, oh, he yeah, saw me naked in the shower. I'm sure that's not the first time it's happened. No, he's been spying on her, dude. It's probably a hole in that wall. That's ugh, probably a couple of crusty socks, dude. She wants to go in there and step on. She, I bet you if she went and walked in that closet, she would hear some like she'd start stepping on some what, Fritos, dude. What sounds like chips, dude. <laughs> couple uh a couple of starts stocks start walking out of there on their own dude oh god it's, it's great i mean we all been there but not with not with our family dude it's freaking messed she, up she pulls out a pair of her underwear and it's like it's like flat as a board dude yeah it's got, dude. <laughs> still got like a period blood stain on there dude well i wasn't thinking about her i was thinking about him <laughs> Oh, I thought it was like her panties. He no. said he was like jerking off her face. Yeah, stole... yeah, yeah. And then she pulls them out of the drawer and they're like. <laughs> and she throws it to the wall and it shatters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy, I think they pretty much just kind of imply he's, isn't he just with her to nail her? And that was like kind of. Yeah, yeah. You know, and this guy, this guy kind of reminds me of Fast Times. He like yeah. this guy looks like he's 30. Mm -hmm. Doesn't he? Like she, she honestly, she's 19, but I think she's somebody that you could cast her as a 14 year old. She's so young looking. I feel like she's could be 14 or 16. This guy looks like he's 30. Dude. He does. And, and I feel like he's a 30 year old and they shaved his beard to make him look younger. Cause if you put a beard on this guy, he is 30, 35 dude with that John Denver haircut. And so she John Denver, but he looks like Jeff Bridges, a young Jeff Bridges, which by the way, you still got to watch star man. You still never seen that. I know I, I have it. I still need to watch it. It's a fun. It's a fun. I think it's a good movie, but that's a John Carpenter studio flick. But uh, Ishmael, this movie to me always felt like it was connected to OG Halloween one and two. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it's got a vibe to it. It's got a vibe. I, so explain to me, I can't quite remember. Cause he, ref he referred to, the people in the back seat as her friends. So how do they know him? Is he like a grade up or something? Is he not really part of their clique? Uh, yeah. It's kind of their relationships are kind of muddled because there's times where he kind of seems like he's the, the the tag along. He's kind of a dick to the other guy that with the glasses. But then sometimes they seem like they all know each other. It's a little confusing, I think. Yeah, I think these are her friends and he's pretty much the guy who can drive. So I feel like I, he feels like a sleazy older guy, like yeah. he's a grade up or yeah. maybe two. It's and probably the senior and they're like the sophomores or something. Yeah, like that. that's that's the vibe I get with. And this kid. So first of all, look at this kid. This is not no seven year old Todd. This is a yeah, 10 or 11 year old. You're right. You're right. And, you're and right. even when I was 10 or 11, I would have had the balls to sneak out of my house and go to a fair by myself. And they, they all went. They all had to take a car to get to the carnival. This kid gets there on foot. He almost gets shot by a redneck on the side of the road. Like this kid goes out of his way. And I don't understand what his game is because, you know, he was saying liar. Like she's going to the carnival. Is that because he wanted to go to the carnival, right? I think so. I think he, well, he's big into horror and stuff. So he's probably he wanted to go and, 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 she, and she was going to go to quote unquote a movie. 
And because uh, didn't she say that? Like, I'll get you back. Like, I'll, I'll do that again. I won't take you to that stupid carnival next week. Yeah, uh, the dad wanted them to go to a movie because there was a girl that got killed at the last carnival. What downtown? In the other town now, or something like was that. Was it proven that it was the same traveling carnival? I they that's know what that? they said. I, but... I would think they would know it if it's the you know if they knew what carnival it was where she got went missing or whatever. Um, okay, yeah. I don't want you going to that carnival. I think that dad's a good dad. He's awfully trusting, though, because she clearly is lying. Like, I would never believe my kid. Well, like, what can you do at that point, though? Honestly, no. You know what you can do? You can meet the boyfriend that you've never go out. You know? Yeah. Yeah. If I like, wow, you, you look like you got roofies in your pocket and you look like you're about 35. Um, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? I'm glad I don't have daughters, man. I, I couldn't handle that. So, no. But yeah, he's just, he's kind of a sleaze ball. He's kind of he's kind of screwing it up early on in the date, but he rebounds it. Yeah, he just pretty much just wants to get his uh, pinky stinky. You can tell the whole time. And so. she, oh yeah, she's like asked like, so why didn't you ever ask me out before? Uh, you can tell he's just like, uh, I just heard you were easy and you were a virgin. But he's but he says the the thing you should say. Yeah, I thought you'd say no. <laughs> like oh, I wouldn't have. <laughs> And in these movies, too, I don't know if girls are really this vicious, but the girls are all like, you know, if you play your cards right and you might not die a virgin. <laughs> I'm like any girl can get laid. All of you is still oh, a rock, dude. I know. Yeah. And I mean, like, if you're you want to. Yeah. If, if you want to knock boots with someone for the right reasons, OK, maybe that takes a little bit more effort. But clearly, this is some fucking man slut. And it's not hard. She could nail any man slut she wanted to. They always act like women are so pathetic, but they're not. It's no, <laughs> they they, women are all horned up too, just like guys were. Yeah, but they don't have to try as hard. If they no. if they're just horned up and they just want to like get railed to get for the sake of getting railed, like it's not hard. No, there's a million guys that will just fuck anything, dude. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this kid's got some brass. I'll give it to him, dude. I never, I never would have like. First of all, I probably would have never knew, known, even known how to get to the carnival from my house. I mean, I don't know how small the town is. Maybe it's a really small town. Like we're seeing really... before. I mean, this kid is old for his age because he's probably snuck out of the house numerous times, went to the movies, you know. He has to have, yeah. Yeah. So, dude, this, this, this kid straight up in one scene, it cuts to him walking around. He's got popcorn. Like, where do you get money? Because he, mm -hmm. he gets allowance, obviously. But this this whole carnival, carnival scene is just, I mean, it's it's great, man. It's, I love it. I, lo I love films with carnivals and. Uh, you'd think I would like Child's Play 3 better, but it does help it that there's a carnival in Child's Play 3. But I like, uh, yeah, this guy, the strong man thing. Yeah, he, I always do the strong man, of course. It's stupid. It's not about strength. No. It's, like a certain, it's a certain way you hit it. Oh, and she's like falling for it. Like, oh, God, look at him. That Prince Valiant haircut's making me moist. And it, the thing about it is you got to swing the, swing the hammer. Like, you have to have your hands like the very back of it so you can get more power on it i've i practiced it numerous times when i go to like pumpkin patch and shit mm. we oh. got a pretty cool our fair is going on right now we got a we got a really cool state fair um i didn't go the last couple of years i'd like to go this year uh speaking of carney i listened to a, a podcast with um a guy that worked at a car uh a fair carnival mm. carney guy um, it was on the uh, God. What's that comedian's podcast that's uh, popular? The the dude from all of them. The Which one? The dude from way to narrow it down. The dude from Florida. You know the um, oh uh, well, Theo Vaughn. Theo Vaughn. Theo Vaughn. He's not Florida. He's uh, like or Alabama. Alabama. Yeah, Theo Vaughn. He was on Theo Vaughn, and it, it was cracking me up the whole time, dude. Yeah, him with a Carney Vogue. Yeah. Every now in a blue moon, he interviews somebody that's just like random. Yeah. Like he'll talk. He mostly talks to celebrities and stuff. Me, he interviewed Trump. But I watched an episode he did like last month. He he interviewed a lunch lady, <laughs> like a high school lunch really? lady. Really? Yeah. And it's, oh, it's I need brilliant. to watch that, dude. Yeah. And I just a high school lunch lady, just a regular. He's just asking her all the dirt about high school, and she was a trip, man. She was real fun to talk to. <laughs> he he goes back and forth with the Carney guy. Like he was like, oh, what about this ride? What about the, you know, the um whatever they call it, the one that spins around and he's just spitting out all these facts about carnivals, dude. He's like, Oh, I remember when I was a kid, I used to go to the carnival. I used to, I used to get off the ride. I used to puke after I got off the ride. And yeah, he, he's funny, dude. He's so, a... look at these. Uh, oh, well, I, I guess this isn't part of the traveling. Yeah. I would look these sinks. Where are these sinks coming from? So at our fairgrounds, you have 
you have at the fairgrounds even when the fair packs up and it's it's gone you have like uh restrooms and stuff that are already there but this is like and it's not surrounded by like a tent and shit or is it not yeah why would you have porcelain sinks in this tent so i'm trying to see if this is already here on the grounds all year round or if this but it looks like it travels no they said they travel in the beginning but I'm saying like fairgrounds sometimes have stuff yeah. already in place, but this doesn't look like one of those types of things. This looks rinky dink. Like, look at the lights. I don't know. It looks like a baseball field or something like that, which they that's what they usually have them around here. So um, I didn't get to go to any carnies this year, but I used to go quite a bit. It's it's still early. Eh. We just started October like ours runs. I'm well, sure yours runs late, but or ours runs for the next month. I want to hit up some haunted houses too. I haven't done that in a couple of years. I like uh, going. Oh, man. To... Yeah, I haven't been to haunted house in years. The one I like, if you guys, if like, if you were down, I wish you guys were down here at this time because I would say let's go to Fear Farm. I love it, dude. It's just like a a farm, and they got the haunted hay maze thing. But the cool thing is, is most of that stuff there's no value for the money. It's just like one haunted house, and you pay an arm and a leg to get like a, a ten minute experience, whatever. But this place, Fear Farm. It's got like five different haunted houses on one plot, and you got the farm, so you, you at least get your money's worth. It's uh, it's pretty cool. I love this I guy, love dude. This guy is yeah. probably my favorite. Yeah, Stop the right up, the Carnival Barker. Yeah. yeah, and this guy's great too because in in a minute you're gonna see him pitching something I've never seen a part of any carnival, a strip club. <laughs> yeah, like like I first of all, okay, first, sorry, we're, we're jumping ahead. We're at the freak show thing. I genuinely. I feel bad, dude, for these animals. I mean, like, I, they don't know any better, but it's it is exploitation. I'm kind of with this blonde that's like, I've seen enough. I want to get out of here. Cause I oh, I I'd love to go to that, dude. I'd love to see you, the bearded lady, dude. Absolutely. You want? I don't want to like just make like the cleft lip cow and the two headed cow like part of a freak show, dude. Oh, I'd pay to see that, man. No, that dude. shit's cool. I think this would have been more effective if they didn't show two headed cow behind it because you know what's coming, dude. Yeah. Like, it'll be like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've never been to a carnival like this. Is this really, I don't think, is this really a thing anymore? These traveling freak shows? I haven't seen any here, but I would love to go see a traveling freak show. I just don't know. Is it really politically correct enough? Like, I don't think it's because, like, I like daycare, dude. I mean, they're making money. <laughs> yeah, but who's actually going to pay to see that stuff these days? I would. Come see the boy with the cleft lip. Like that's no, that's a serious, that's a condition. Like what? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's not like you're going to the big cities. I mean, you're you're more of the, you know, the rural folks, the country bumpkins. Which is come just... see the woman that was born with both genitalia. That she'll probably run for president someday. Probably. Like there's like these are not like that's look, pretty common I, now. I love this dude. This, yeah, uh, the brother Tad dude. <laughs> <laughs> In the chart. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's really cool. And so, I don't know, man. Nothing's keeping them from just, like, stealing Tad, dude. You could just, like, take him. Oh, yeah. Some punk kid could just take Tad home or break it or something, man. There's nothing protecting Tad's not really security. He's he's got a rope. He's just got a rope there. Um, So this movie was box office. It did $7.8 million. It had a budget of $3 million, so... In 81, 7.8 million is good. Yeah. That's good money. So it did uh, did pretty well. Um, for yeah, it, so. I'd say, yeah, I'd say it's a hit. What did it? Oh, did it? I'm sorry. Did it do that total or opening week? Total. Or, that's, oh, that's, well, that's, that's just for the budget. I think that was probably good for the time for the, you know. Um, The setting, of course, is this is set in middle America. Really quick. New- where did the blood come from? Because he didn't really hurt himself, did he? Where did the blood come from? I, I don't know. Because he's like, oh, Tad got me, or I got, oh, you son of a bitch. And he rubs blood in his face. Well, where'd the blood come from? I don't know. The umbilical cord maybe stuck his hand in there, dude. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Drain, really drain some blood. When I was younger, this, like, fat Asian dummy scared me, too, dude. Oh, Everything about this God, dude, creepy. this is creepy. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, that thing is. <laughs> I'd love to have that in my, my house, dude. Hey, I'm sure your wife would love it, too. <laughs> Yeah, she walks in the door. It's just like, "Hey, honey, how you doing?" It's like Roseanne, dude. Explain to me the strip club, the titty bar at the carnival. Uh, 
it doesn't make any sense. I've never seen that or heard of that before. Never see and why it wouldn't be legal. I I highly doubt it would be legal. And I don't really know. See, I don't think they have. Do they really have these kind of traveling carnivals anymore? That are they kind of seem off, off uh, uh, on the outskirts of what's legal. Like they just kind of come and go, and they probably don't pay taxes. And you know, they're probably ski. You know what I mean? Like, do these do they file permits they just kind of seem i'm sure yeah i'm sure nowadays they gotta file permits and all that shit and like especially for the rides so they have to be inspected sure before that and then yeah i don't trust traveling carnivals i i just don't trust them. i don't tr- i don't, I don't even... trust the rides i mean and the games are all rigged but that's whatever you know they're rigged i i trust i trust uh like the state fair the arizona state fair the stuff that gets put up every single year and it's not traveling i i trust that a little bit more but i don't even go on these crazy rides i don't do it i i just love the atmosphere i like the smell of the turkey legs oh yeah. and i like to i like i like to go this stuff like the fun house i love those types of things even though most of the time they're lame i i like going through them man i just like the, the funnel cakes the corn dogs man just yeah, yeah the and i like is fantastic i like moderate thrills man but i don't like do tilt to whirls i hate that stuff i don't even like roller coasters i can do roller coasters but not they can't go upside down that's a that's a fucking hard stop for me it won't happen yeah they used to do like the barrel i hated the barrel dude that the spinning barrel dude i don't do like spinning to the wall and ugh, i couldn't do that i like how this guy does one magic trick and he's like all right next show's in two hours yep hey he got his like, money was that, was that a show he's a shitty magician yeah he gives us the uh, four one one on Dracula. It's effective. I mean, I would come on. Clearly, that's a plant. You know, his daughter. It's pretty effective, though. He looks like Beetlejuice. He does look like Beetlejuice, which I still want to see the new Beetlejuice. I watched the old one. My kids last week, they loved it. Ishmael, that is a good point. I love that episode of The Simpsons, the Carney episode with Jim Varney, uh, where these Carnies go into their house and they squat and they won't leave. <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a good episode. Yeah, it, it does look like Beetlejuice, Akito, and yeah. So the new Beetlejuice, I I pre-ordered that because I have to. My whole family loves Beetlejuice. It's a crowd pleaser, so I I bought I bought that 4K, and plus it's got a cool like steel book with the lenticular, like um. Like oh recall. yeah, yeah, okay. So I'll get that. Yeah, it's like that's a good. So I and that's actually already on digital like this week. Oh, it is. Yep. They got it in time for Halloween time. I think next week it comes out to rent on demand for like 20 bucks. Ugh, and of see, course, hold off. and they're doing that thing where the physical doesn't come out to November. Okay. So they're trying to like drain you for every dollar. Oh, I've on. already got I've already got the physical on pre-order. I'm like, of course, I'm not gonna pay 20 bucks in October to watch it. Yeah. But, you know, you want to watch it in October. But that's just it's a sleazy practice i i really hate it and i can't do that i can't spend twenty dollars to rent something no no Uh, what i wish they would do is uh walmart used to do this um when you would pre-order a movie from walmart that had like a voodoo code uh i'm pretty sure that you would get uh you would get emailed the voodoo code huh yeah there was a time where they were doing that and maybe that was an incentive just to go through walmart or or you know what? You know why I think it was? I think Wal- I get so bad. Walmart used to own Voodoo. That's why. Yeah, you're Remember? right. You're right. That's why. And mm-hmm. then Voodoo got bought out by Fandango. Yeah. And then it took a few years, and they finally just rebranded it this year to actual Fandango. They had to kind of ease people out of the Voodoo brand. Because remember, when they bought it, it was like Voodoo by Fandango. And now Voodoo's gone. Which yep. I still call it Voodoo. I can't call it Fandango like, live or what. It's, it's dumb. But yeah, so when Walmart owned it, that was awesome because to me if i pre-ordered your overpriced 4k like they always are send me an when when it's out for digital send me the fucking digital like i'm i've got it coming to me anyway like why what does it hurt that i have it i i'm not saying give it to me early to where i can like leak it and shit but give it to me when it comes out for everybody on digital just give it to me what the hell you know it makes no sense i don't even Here's here's a cool piece of trivia for the film. So Toby Hooper reused some of the film props when directing the music video for Billy Idol Dancing with Myself. So okay. some of the props are in that, which I don't remember because I don't remember seeing the music video, but that's interesting. This so, movie was shot in Miami and other locations in Florida. 
uh, due okay. to due to more relaxed child labor laws uh, available on the East Coast. Most of the cast were young actors. So, oh, I didn't know it was shot in Miami. Yeah, you can't really tell. But, you know, just like you should. I, that's the way it should be, man. This whole movie, there's no bait and switch here. This whole movie takes place at the fun house. Yeah. We pretty much start the flick at the main character's house, and then we're in a car, and we're at the fun house within, like, five minutes. That's the way it should be, man. I don't want to see, like... 20 minutes of fucking build up. I don't want to see 30 minutes before they even get to the fun house. Uh, I think sometimes a movie might literally not bring you to the fun house to the last 30 minutes. And I, I love this. I, I, the pacing of it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Uh, it doesn't bore you for a second. Now they're going to visit, uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, the fortune teller, the crazy fortune teller. Yeah. She's insane. They're going to take a, the, make a mockery out of her as they should. So we were talking about the strip strip joint earlier. So the the girls, the talent, were actually local strippers from Miami, Florida. Nice. <laughs> that though, they were some sleazy strippers too. They were like bending over, dude. Like yeah. like putting them in guys' they, faces. They knew dude. what they were doing, man. I love it. Those, they these guys that the audacity to put the holes in the back of the tent and just spy, dude. Oh yeah. It's like the women wanted to look more than the guys do, and the guys like, "Wait your turn." I'm like, I don't know, man. That's kind of hot. Let the girls look at it, dude. But that's and nobody notices that, dude. I would have noticed that if I'm like looking at that little tent. I noticed that there's somebody fucking poking holes. There's eyeballs. So this is the same cinematographer that did uh, Walter Hill's The Warriors. Yeah, which I, okay. can, I can kind of see that because I guess Toby Hooper wanted him after seeing that, which is awesome. I didn't even think about that. It does. It does look like it. I mean, it's it's really hard to kind of. It pops, man. The, in 4K, it's just there's something about the look. It, I can totally see that. Yeah, but the cinematographer, he's like framing up the shots and stuff. He's not necessarily doing a light. I know, but I, I, I mean, I can, I can tell. It's also of the era too. I, you know, I don't know. But the the Warriors is great too. We should do that sometime. Yeah, I fantastic. still haven't watched my uh, 4K of that. It looks great. Can you dig it? So director Toby Hooper was bitten by a brown recluse while, while during filming. They don't mess around, dude. I, I don't miss them. I live in the Southwest now, and, uh, you know, we have, like, bark scorpions, but I never had a problem with them, but we don't, got, we don't have spiders out here, man. I mean, I'm sure there's somewhere, but we don't have brown recluses and, uh, in the Midwest or everywhere. Yeah, they're, they're not and, as bad here. They're a little bit more south, southern state. Of dude, mind, in Missouri, in, in, spring, in, in southwest Missouri, where I live, Springfield, Missouri, where I used to live, dude, all over the place. Terrible. And, you know, I lived in an apartment that was made in the 70s, so, of course, everything was, like, tan-colored. The walls had, like, a an eggshell uh, paint to them. The carpet was tan. My furniture was brown. It was just at a very 70s vibe. I'd be sitting on the rug, dude, and one of these fuckers would run across me, uh, across my foot or whatever. And you can't. They just totally blend in. And uh, those things will screw you up, man. Um, and that's, I think that's, I think it was one of those bitches that ended up, well, started. It didn't ultimately kill Jeff Hanneman, but it's what started. Like, right? He got that necrotitis or whatever. Yeah. And I knew a couple of people. Uh, one of my friend's wife, man, her dad got bit by one of them. And if you don't get it treated right away, it will flesh eat. It will like dig away at your hand or wherever he got. He had to get surgery because this thing just like ate away. Damn. At his flesh. How long did he wait? For? I don't know. But it's one of those things where, you know, you wait too long and eventually it gets obvious. Did like, he know shit, he got, got bit by a spider, the brown recluse? You might pass it off. I think you might pass it off as like a mosquito bite. Yeah. At first, yeah. I would think like so. in the first yeah. day or two, but you have to address it because and you know, you should be able to like see like a spider bite will have like two like fang things, little dots on them and there's ways to like look at them. But yeah, anyway, her dad went a little too long with that and he had to get all kinds of surgery on his hand and he fucked up the nerves in his hand and stuff like that. Jesus. That's yeah. crazy. And that's what that's what happened to Jeff Hanneman, right? Of yeah. Slayer. Yeah. And it put him out of commission and then it just made his alcoholism get worse. And then, you know, it, it, he had like cirrhosis of the liver or something. I don't know. So it was a, a combination of things. But anyway, so look, this guy, little little bro here is get going into the fun house. And they got they got Frankenstein here. It's it's obviously very intentional. There, there's horror references all over this movie. We've mm -hmm. already seen him in his bedroom uh, with Dracula doing the magic show with the parents watching Bride of Frankenstein. But it's very fitting that 
I, I call him the goat boy because it looks like he's a goat boy. You know, mm. what, what is he? Is he supposed to just be a freak or is he supposed to be a goat? Because it's like he's got like a goat snout, dude. I don't know. I but I call him goat. the goat. Yeah. But anyway, it's fitting that they got him dressed as Frankenstein because just like Frankenstein, I think this character is a tragic monster. He's a tragedy. Yeah. Because I, le- I legit feel bad for him this whole movie. I, lo- I love that mask, dude. I, I'd love to have that mask. But don't you, am I weird about that? I feel bad for, for the goat guy. Yeah. He's, you know, because they're going to show him where he's like, you know, with the whore. You know, obviously the, the fortune teller is only for, fortune telling doesn't pay the bills all the way, clearly, because she's hooking on the side. Uh, and, uh, you know, you feel bad for him because he's deformed and he, he, he just probably wants to do what everybody else does. And you see his dad's kind of abusive to him. And I get it. He's the monster, but so was Frankenstein. And it, like I said, it's a tragic tale. And, and, and they even imply, I guess they imply that they, he, he, he uh, sexually assaults the blonde. When they don't really say, but yeah. you find her dead after she was trying to like seduce him to save her life. Yeah, and she stabbed him, and you find her, and he's got claws. She's got claw marks. I'm, I just assume like he had his way with her, but maybe he didn't. Maybe he just killed her. I don't know, but, but still, man. And then like at the end of the movie when he's getting brutalized, like he sees his dad dead, and you can see he's upset. It's like a very Leatherface type of thing. Mm-hmm. He's kind of like you know probably mentally handicapped. And then when he gets like stuck in that like grinder or whatever, dude, I just I feel bad for him. I really feel bad for him because he's just one of these guys that's like Frankenstein where he's just a victim of his upbringing and he didn't ask to be born. Right. He didn't ask to be born like that. And so I don't know. I I think it was intentional. I'm not trying to like sympathize with the the monster in the movie, but. Yeah, he's he's a Cyclops, dude. He's not a Cyclops. He's got two eyes, dude. (laughs) I know. He's like a goat man. Like a split head. Yeah, look at these. Look at these. Uh, look at these babes. Look at these babes, dude. They're just Local uh, casting oh, here. Opening up the holes, dude. What if they're like right behind the stripper's asses, dude? Like one of one of them like just queefs, and they, they what if they're dirty, dude? And he's farting in the face. You get a whiff. So is it, is this a Porky's ripoff here too with the the people? Yeah. Yeah, but there's no like what nun or whatever to grab the yank the crank, dude. Yeah, oh god, I love that movie. It's so funny. I never saw the sequels. I don't think I did. Porky's Revenge, and then I I've seen I don't the, think I ever watched them. I've seen the second one, I believe. I I love stuff that takes place in that era, like the Happy mm-hmm. Days era, the Fonzie days, and all that stuff. I I like those period pieces. I always love those episodes of Quantum Leap where he was like in the Greaser days. Oh, I like love like the, dra- the Drag Race episode. Play for pinks, race for pinks. I love that, dude. But you don't you don't like Grease, the movie Grease. No, because it's a musical and fuck that. Oh, God. But the music is fantastic. I bet you want to see Joker, too, don't you? you no, I don't. I actually don't. I'm not. really. I think it's so funny. That's just getting railed, dude. Yeah, it, you, but I, you the had first Joker was great. I love the first. But Joker. you had this movie that um, everybody seemed to love, had great ratings and rotten it, it, it scores. It was hitting box office records for an R-rated movie. And Joaquin even like won an Oscar for it. So it kind of was like putting a little bit of respect on a comic book title. And then they go and decide, okay, let's do a sequel that doesn't matter and make it a musical. It doesn't make any sense. And it's going to bomb. It's getting like nothing on Rotten Tomatoes. It's just, uh, why would they shit on what they, they should have been one and done. And just had this like mic drop moment and like it would have stood on its own and people might have looked back fondly like, yeah, you know what? In an era where we were getting flooded with all these shitty fucking comic movies, somebody made a real movie and they had to ruin it. So well, and the director came out saying it's the last DC movies doing. So, of course, his fault. Yeah, you fucker. Exactly. It's like, it's like, I mean, you should have you should have walked away at that point. But why even make a sequel to Joker? Because I thought Joker was fantastic. The. It, it, you don't need to expand it. Yeah. Like everybody knows the story of the Joker. Just, just, just have that like one movie, and then you could fill in the blanks of your own alternate universe that he would have been a part of with the Batman, and have fun with it. Um, but yeah, no, not do a musical. I heard it just basically. I, I heard the movie's pointless, even musical aside. I because I heard it basically just kind of recaps the whole first movie. I think he's like in court. It's just, it's not really. It doesn't sound like it serves any purpose. Um, but I have no desire to see it. So Amy's here in the phone booth, pretty much calling mom and dad saying they're sleeping over at somebody's dad. House. Dad's super trusting because like, you know, you're saying, what can you do at that point? I get it, but he should have been suspicious that 
she was going to go to that carnival. We've all done that, though. I mean, we said, oh, we're going to stay at uh, such and such's house just so you can hang out with some women or some, well, not me, dudes, but yeah, that's what people do. I've done it. Hey, I have told that story a million times about our buddy Travis, dude, and we went to that concert he wasn't supposed to go to. <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> John, dude, his stepdad was the greatest guy ever. He and walks he's like, in, he's like, why do you smell like weed? It's like, he's like, you know, you can't. He's like, I don't want you going to that show or whatever. And it was one of those things. And because, you know, uh, it it was interesting because, you know, John's house, their house, he, he kind of had like one foot in the old school where like, don't listen to that devil music. They kind of had that one foot on that side. And, you know, the, his brother, they disapproved a little because he would listen to Slayer and all this stuff. Yeah. And, so. John kind of had one, but at the same time, John liked comic books and he listened to Rush. Yeah. And I'm like, is Rush he, really? He, underst he understood it, I think. But like, but I mean, so I don't know. I don't think Rush is bad, but I also don't think 98% of heavy metal is bad either. It's all the same. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so, but anyway, he had he, strict rules do not go to that show. And then it was obvious we were going out that night and he made up some lie. I don't remember where he said we were going. But it was like, okay, you're not going to that show, are you? No, we're going to Todd's house. Okay. But you have to know. I'm like, there's no way he fucking believes you. No, because we never we, went to my house. I, I don't know if that's the excuse we gave. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, we went like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, we won't go to that concert that I that you know I wanted to go to and that you know is tonight. Uh, we're just going to go to the movies instead. It was like one of those things like, oh, okay. And then we left. And then we come back and I crash at Travis's house. Uh, it was me and Travis came back and John literally, Hey, Travis calls him upstairs. Cause we entered through the basement and uh, dude, we both go up there. They talk to it. And I'm like thinking to myself, it's kind of late. Yeah. Why would he want to talk to us? I, in hindsight, I'm like, he knows. I yeah. think he's fucking, he, he was, he was sitting there in the dark waiting for Travis to get home. And then like, know. dude, my neck hole on my shirt and Travis's too ripped. Oh, yeah. Because we have been in like a mosh pit. I was so tired, dude. I was about ready to pass out of the wheel. I was just My, driving. Yeah, freaking just neck hole ripped. I look like I got the shit kicked out of me. He saw us like three or four hours before and we looked totally fine. And like, <laughs> and my fucking face is a mess. I'm all sweaty. I literally swallowed some guy's dreadlock in the audience oh, that night. That, yeah. I was contact high for the first time in my life, dude, because, you know, this little venue uh, was just every smoking pot and stuff. And I was, it was my first concert my first like show like that and i was just rocked and uh clearly we're not passing the smell test but Tra travis just kind of stuck by the story and that was it and then i think i i had to have said something he, to travis he when kept we to lying to john come on when i just when i i think when we go went downstairs to like go chill for the night I, there's no way i didn't say that travis like travis no way he believed. like come on come on and uh but I, and knowing john he probably said something like must have been some movie, huh? Yeah, like, yeah, I'm, yeah, all, yeah, I'm yeah. all fucked up, dude. <laughs> Probably had a black eye, dude. <laughs> so how'd it end? <laughs> That's good. Yeah, John, John should have been one of them sitcom dads, dude. Where you're just he, like... he was definitely a sitcom dad. Um, he, I don't know. It, it would have been funny if we told him we were going to a bowling alley. Oh, we're going to bowling. But the actual concert was at a bowling alley. It's like on it, the side it's of a possible. Bowling alley was the story it's like oh it, you're going bowling okay it, that, that, that's possible that was the story because it was at this place that was a bowling alley that had a music venue attached to it yeah. um so it's it's possible that was how we kind of skirted the lot i mean i had nothing to lie about john wasn't my dad yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was travis doing all the lies uh and i want to say i want to say, it's possible i'm getting my my memories mixed up but there was only so many times that i slept over at travis's house so I think this had to have been, I think it was like, it might've been like the night before my birthday, because one of the times I slept over at Travis house, I think it was this time because the next day was my birthday. And I remember waking up and I remember, uh, John yelling, Aaron, get off here. Like it's your birthday. Oh, and then we went to the mall and like, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm not going to dox you, but the yeah, mall that where, yeah. where you bought your, uh, ring yeah, yeah. remember mm -hmm. shitty mall we all went out there and that's the whole day of our buddy travis's mom going what a slut yeah i, I love that memory dude i absolutely love that memory i brought i brought that up to him not to, uh who did I bring that up to <laughs> pat or travis missy or something missy, I don't, yeah we're like just doxing everybody who cares but mm -hmm. uh <laughs> that was such a fun day dude uh anyway so 
You know what's funny about this? These guys, they're going to go. They, so they come up with a plan to spend the night in the fun house, which, you know, I think we've all fantasized about this. Maybe not with a fun house. A but I've always thought like about that. like, wouldn't it be cool if we just. I, I and I do that with my wife all the time. Like you know, we could hide out here and they would never find us. Yeah, you just hang we, out we, in a stall or whatever, put your feet up, and just uh, we could we or we yeah we we could totally get away with this, and we could just and then of course you know she's probably like yeah, but why? Then what? Well, then we're here. Yeah, when it's closed, and then the trick is you have to hide there until they open again and slip out. Well, this was before they actually had cameras and everything in the stores. Like now, well, I mean now, I mean you be detective so quick. They had that story like that a few years ago about that guy living in the Walmart aisles, like in the toilet paper aisles, like like that Chuck Mangione in the mm. King of the Hill episode where Chuck Mangione was living in the Megalomart. I don't but there was a guy who was like living in the store and in a Walmart and he was like literally he'd be like behind the toilet paper and he'd be like living like a rat and he'd have like his own forts and little crevices and stuff. And he was lit and, and, and he would come out in the middle of the night like some rat or cockroach, take Cheetos and get food and shit like that. And he would eat. And he'd bring it back to his holes. Yeah, this guy was living there for a while. I do remember the Walmart baby where that was a movie or whatever, where she. Uh, lived oh, in Walmart. that's closer to the heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Hey, that. that's a Rush song, by the way. We were just talking about Rush. <laughs> that's with uh, Natalie Portman, right? Yeah, Natalie Portman. Uh, speaking of Rush, uh, A's a Cheeto. Bloodhead, you know, man. I, I thought his name was Zach Cheeto. Is it Zach Cheeto? It could be Zach Cheeto. I think a it's Zach Cheeto. Cheeto. I like Rush, man. Put some respect on the name. I enjoy it. It's comic nerd rock for sure. Ooh. But I have thought about this because it's kind of like, um, I think when I was a kid, it predates the idea of Five Nights at Freddy's. But when I was a kid, I'm like, man, would it be cool to be like a Chuck E. Cheese or whatever and just stay there overnight to go behind the curtain and play all the games? They don't have the curtain anymore. They don't have the animatronics. But I'm saying when I was a kid. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and obviously some other kids had that idea because they created Five Nights at Freddy's, which is the, the same concept. But uh, yeah, I mean, I used to want to get off on these rides and be like, I want to go walk around and I want to go like play with the animatronics and stuff. And and these guys are just living the dream, man. This is not nearly as elaborate. This this is actually believable. This place looks like actually one of those like little ride along fun houses you see at the carnival. Doesn't look very big. Um, the, the creme de la creme is the child's play three one dude, how that place exists. It's so, it's such a fucking movie stage. Yeah. The child's play three is great. I also like the house of it's, thousand it's, corpses murder ride, but that's small. The, chi that's tiny. the child's play three attraction that they're going through is more like space mountain, like a Disney world thing. Cause it's just such a big enclosure. And there's like that grim reaper, a giant yeah. with a fucking scythe. Like, what the hell slices his face off. And it's a real yeah. scythe for some reason. <laughs> Yeah. But that dude, that's huge. And and uh it also kind of reminds me of the one in the movie Clifford with Martin Short, like the dinosaur world or wherever he goes to. I don't remember that's, that. I don't think I've seen that. Oh, you should. That's a wacky movie, man. I love it. Charles Grodin and uh, Martin Short. Where Martin Short plays the little kid. Is that is that where he's like popping out of the doghouse? Is that is that it, the Clifford the Big Red Dog, dude. What? Oh no, no. Clifford is a. Uh, it's basically Problem Child before Problem Child, and Martin Short plays the junior character. But the and he's like this little pill. He's this. Uh, I think he's the nephew of Charles Grodin's character, and he has to like take him in. And he's a little devil. But the the the, the hilarity okay. of it is because Martin Short is playing a little boy, and he's obviously a fucking grown ass man. He's wearing like little like Angus Young you know shorts and he's a school boy. he's like ah! he's talking like this but the funny part about the movie is they they commit to it and they never they they he's literally they're not saying hey let's make it wacky because you're clearly a, a grown man no it's almost like hey we wrote a movie for a little boy like like a, you know a junior but we're gonna cast a grown man and we're just gonna like sell it and that's what they do. They never break character. Like literally, Clifford is a little boy, <laughs> and and it's so fucking bonkers. Like I and you start believing it. Like yeah, Martin Short's this fucking little kid. <laughs> I do remember this. I haven't seen it though, but yeah, a ten year old boy is obsessed with visiting a dinosaur theme park. Yeah, amusement park. Uh, yeah, this looks this looks funny, dude. And it's just like a fever dream because once again, you you start to forget. They just sell it so hard that you eventually start forgetting that, oh, wait, this is Martin Short. He's a fucking grown ass man. And then when you realize that, when you get lost, in it, you're like, this is fucking a fever dream. This is wild. 
And Charles Grodin's an amazing actor. I think he's highly oh, underrated. Yeah. He's great. And he's very much like he's very much like his character in like a Beethoven or something where he's like the curmudgeon or whatever. And uh, it, it's a good movie. Clifford's a great movie, actually. Anyway, so like uh, this movie that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. So they're in the house. They're about to witness the murder because they're above here. I guess it's like two floors. Yeah. And this is where Goat Boy is going to get his pinky stinky. Yep. He this this fortune teller is like taking clear advantage of him. She's like wanting a million dollars from she him. Like, not money, enough. Dude. And you feel bad. He's like he keeps giving money, going to the lockbox. And she's like, not enough. And I, and I don't know why. I just feel bad because he's so sad for him to do this. Uh, anyway, she starts giving him a hand job and he like comes right away. And yeah. uh, she's like, oh, I know what you want. You want your money back. Yeah, I'm sorry, mister. And like, honestly, come on, man. Have a heart. I would have been like, here, look, I'll, 20 jo- a hand job usually goes for 20 bucks. I'm going to give you back 80. Oh, those, Good. Those don't, carnies don't are ruthless, me. man. Like, don't murder me. I'm sure the hookers would be doing the same shit, man. I mean, I, I think this is their first time. I think this is this is obviously their first time with her because even like his dad, you know, makes it seem like, you know, hell, I could have got you one of the, the tent girls for 15. <laughs> like you gave her a hundred dollars. Uh, he's so he's funny. been having an eye for her probably for a while. I mean, he's curious, you know, he's like, you know, I want to try some of the older, but he's going to he's going to kill her, dude. Um, He's clearly like this unhinged guy. She should know him. She works on that yeah, travel carnival. They, I'm sure they know it. Yeah. Yeah, but like you just look at that. So you just look, rips you, him off, dude. The, the litter the letter box cut him off too. Yeah. Bummer. Uh, you you uh, really want to see those saggers? Uh you know, why not? It adds a little bit of uh let's let's call it uh production value. You know, why not? Yeah. I can see that. Oh, we got dirty, filthy mattress, dude. Oh yeah. Fun. Dude, we were so poor when I was a little kid, dude. I literally slept on a mattress like that. Oh, I did too, dude. I had a mattress on the floor growing up. That's all I did. You yeah. had mold in the middle of it, dude. <laughs> and I didn't have mold in mine. I mean, of course, I oh, had my, mice and rats crawling on me. but no, my, I mean, Mine wasn't even second hand. It was probably third and fourth hand. Probably came from like a Salvation Army. Probably a hundred homeless. Probably came from a homeless shelter. It probably probably wore out its welcome at a homeless shelter and was no longer good enough for them. And then it was donated to the church and they gave it to us because this thing was like molding through the middle. And I can't believe my mom let us sleep on this because you should took a black light to it. No, I can't believe (laughs) I I get it. You're poor, don't have money, but this was like inhumane. Now that I think about it, I should have never should have never been allowed to like your mattress shouldn't be wet. Did 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 a, well, I mean, did a pillow a come with it? Were you sleeping on the pillow too that came with it? No, That'd be even worse. I don't, I don't know, dude. I don't know, but it's disgusting. And I I just think about these days, dude. I, God, dude. I don't know. I don't want to think about it. Terrible. <laughs> it it really was. Look at this, uh, Ishmael Hellraiser mattress, dude. That's what me and my brother, uh, my brother Doctor Sleaze, we we still refer to the mattresses that me and him had. These little twin mattresses that look like we call them the Hellraiser mattresses. Oh God! <laughs> really? That, yeah, like you know, the Uncle Frank or the Hellraiser two mattresses. You know, or yeah. Julia dies on the bed or whatever and comes back. It's yeah, we we call it the Hellraiser mattress, and I just can't believe because yeah, yeah, there probably was blood stains on that fucking thing. Oh man, I should have slept on the floor, dude. Yeah, it'd probably be a lot cleaner. My childhood sucked. <laughs> what is this? Dexter Lab Chubby Cheese episode? Yeah, I didn't see that. I can imagine what you're referring to, but I don't think I saw that. So they witnessed the murder. And, you know, they're, they're obviously thinking about what to do. They send this guy down there to. Uh, he steals the money, but he's going down there to check if she's dead. Yep. And then this idiot takes the money out of the lockbox. He can't help himself. And that's what's going to fuck him over. Stealing another man's money. Well, because the dad's going to come in here. Because obviously Goat Boy went to go tell his dad. He's honorable enough. I assume he's like, hey, dad, I fucked up. You know, um, I don't know how he speaks grunt, but uh, he tells him. And he just assumes that um, he probably just got another 
local because they imply it's the goat guy that did it. Like, yeah. You hear about the last because he's like, I, I don't mind if it's locals, whatever. It's fine. You fuck it, whatever. Not one of our own. You know, I would think he would want him to not make a habit of fucking over the locals because obviously it, uh, I don't know, puts a bad reputation on their their traveling organization. But it's kind of like how you'd have Henry Lee Lucas and serial killers like that, you know, just traveling cross country. I guess that's that's all the traveling circus is. And, you know, those guys would would pick up drifters and prostitutes and just kill them and. They, they never would have gotten caught back in those days. You know, Henry Lee Lucas, he 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 made himself get caught. He could have went on forever and ever. Oh, yeah. When you keep when you keep moving and you stay on the road, you never stay anywhere too long. You can kill as many drifters as you want. And just uh, I mean, the thrill was obviously gone. I don't know if like with him, it was a thing where like somebody else was taking his credit or somebody else was going to go down for it. And he's like, oh, no, I don't know if that's what made him like. Is that why when he got captured or whatever, he just kept going over all the people that he uh, offed or what? Yeah, and I think there's even speculation that maybe they can't prove because they didn't find all the bodies that he was talking about, like that he was fluffing the numbers. Mm, yeah, because like there, because he was going off on people that had never even been reported. God, right? But there's no way to prove otherwise either because these are all people he tended to. to ki- he wasn't like Ted Bundy. He was killing drifters, runaways, and prostitutes. Yeah. So these are people that weren't going to get reported, right? Yeah. So, you know, you never, you never know. So this this movie is supposed to be a video nasty in the UK, but it it mm-hmm. didn't. It was unsuccessful. So, um, why they wanted to put it on video nasties? I don't know. I mean. I don't see why it, it'd be that controversial in the UK, but who knows? The UK used to be crazy when it comes to uh, censorship. So, yeah, I don't understand it. You know, I always think about. Um, I don't know why I always pit Toby Hooper versus George Romero, but I always do for some reason because I I kind of consider them contemporaries in a way. Uh, by the way, sorry, these guys. I I often think about. Most of these carnies are probably just regular, regular people. Like, mm-hmm. you know, they're probably freaks, but they, they I, I think it's mostly the dad and his son. Like, I don't think they know the goats fucking killing, you know, locals or whatever. There's just no way they're all in on it. I mean, some of these people are, look at that little, the little man with the beard of later, whatever. <laughs> but some of them just look like teamsters, like, like, you know, just mm-hmm. people that set up and whatever. Like, there's the freak show people and there's the people that are like there just to set up shop and, you know, so I don't know. I, I I always think about a day in the life of somebody. And do the homeless people that are walking around do they travel with the carnies too, or are they just like local homeless? I would think they're traveling with them, but who knows? What I mean, what a great gig, dude! Yeah, could be homeless with the carnival. Oh yeah, great man. Well, I mean, yeah, you get paid in what food and whatever rash paid to do what? Be homeless? Well, and walk around. You, and you don't, you don't out? get you don't get paid, but I mean, you get. Probably I a like meal, the, a hot meal, and a, I like the the pervert by the tent, on. dude. I like the pervert by the tent saying he was taking a leak, dude. <laughs> What's a sweet thing like you doing out here by yourself? Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this is where the dad. Sorry, I, I was talking about something a second ago. I'll get back to it. The whole uh, Romero thing, but yeah. So the dad's coming back. Uh, he's you know obviously his son went and fetched him, and this this part's hilarious. Um, what is her name again? Not Zelda. What is her freaking name? Oh, God. Uh, he says it. Z- her name's not Zelda, but like Zelda, the fortune teller. But he's like, now he's mad at her because you one of our own. You don't hurt yeah, one of yeah, our yeah. own. Like, and I think this whole scene is is done really well. I think this interaction we get between when he's angry at his son it, it, I think it gives you all the context of his upbringing and the relationship you need. Yeah, as a throwback you know, to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Exactly, hundred percent. And then you get you get the whole thing. So you get him like uh, talking about the brother. Mm-hmm. Don't call me your father, right? I don't want to hear your voice. So we can already kind of put together that maybe he has some resentment. the The thing that I already paint in my head is well, maybe the mom died. Yeah, maybe the mom died of complications and or all she could do was birth freaks because they're probably like brother and sister for all I know. Yeah. Um, but it makes you wonder. It's like, oh, OK, I'm pay- I'm putting the story in my head like, OK, the parents are clearly incestuous because why they keep having these freaks. I don't even want to know how they look like weird goat people. 
and he obviously is very uh resentful against his boy and why would he do that and so and then i like when he he comes back at him and he starts apologizing and you know he he says what does he say he he apologizes and and oh he says something that uh that sums it up really well for yeah, me yeah i can't remember no i i oh when he starts talking about this will be the last time like, help me with this one and when he starts kind of like going into his own head talking about the previous times and when he says something like and the two girl scout girls oh yeah that yeah, was yeah. the worst mm -hmm. he's like disgusted that was terrible and i'm like oh man like I, you don't have to show me flashbacks you don't have to show me any backstory just him saying two girl scout girls and having this look on his face and him even feeling disgusted like that it's just it's done so well mm -hmm. that's how you do it but, you know, uh, Madam Zol this is where he finds Zena. Zena. Yeah, Zena. It was yeah. Zena. That's right. This is where he's like finding the money's gone. Right. Yeah. So he's like, all right, well, we're all good. But uh, he's going to find the money. He's like, holy shit. And yeah, this is where uh, the people above dox themselves because he drops his lighter. Yeah. Fucking idiot. Or he finds the lighter. I don't know if he drops it or finds it. I can't remember. Well, he dropped it, didn't he? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, then the games kind of begin and the movie kind of escalates and wraps up kind of quickly and not in a bad way, but, you know, it, it, we've been watching this movie for how long at this point, almost an hour, I guess yeah. we have 40 more minutes, I guess it goes on a little longer than I thought, maybe that maybe the pace is so quick to me that it just doesn't feel like it we have 40 more minutes. Well, because it, it feels like from this point, it feels like we've already been in this movie an hour, which we have, and it feels like. It just, I guess we get to watch everybody get picked off, but it just feels like it goes so Yeah, fast. they don't get in the fun house till probably the 40, 45 minute mark. And Look at that. Uh, I love yeah, the reveal. Awesome, dude. I was watching uh, the Sean Clark's YouTube channel and he's got that, that head, the mask. Oh, that thing's awesome, dude. Yeah. Yeah, he's got the mask. It's pretty sweet. I think he's got like the gloves too, the mitts that he was wearing. He, he, so he has the goat mask and the Frankenstein mask. Does he have the Frankenstein mask? I I don't know. I I thought he I saw that where, where he I know he has the goat the Frankenstein mask too. Oh, I know he's got the goat and he's got the the hands at war too, like oh, the hoof okay. hands. Yeah, he's got the whole deal. The I mean, screen used he, ones. Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah. Wow. He's got it's got he's got it. Yeah, I, he's got the hook hook up on all that stuff and and he's even said like as far as like the collector's market the the part that he's in he's like it's a very small circle and it has to be yeah. for someone like him to have so much. Oh yeah, of, of what's out there, you know, it's just like him and a few other whales. It's like they all just kind of. Well, dang, I wonder how much he spent on something like that, though. It... Well, and a lot of the stuff he has, some of the stuff he spends a lot of money on. A lot of the stuff he has, it's like when he does work or he's like been adjacent to people on the films, and he'll he'll just barter and take stuff or whatever. You know, he's mm -hmm. gotten lucky on some stuff, but some stuff he pays a fortune for, like an absolute fortune, and I don't know how. I don't know how he's married. <laughs> yeah, I saw, he's got like a. I saw he had that Hellraiser statue from what was that? Yeah, Hellraiser, the Hellraiser three. Yeah, yeah, and that's the one I think he said he spent the most money on. Um, that thing's crazy, man. That entire pillar, and he had to have it shift. I watched the whole episode where he had it shift and how he, he got was, in this it, house and everything like that. And he was struggling. He's like, dude, yeah. it's like this is, and he was super paranoid about getting damaged on the way back. The way it was packed, and it was very, very interesting. And then once he got in the house, it's like, all right, well, it's like I don't know if this is. He can't get it upstairs. Yeah, it's, like it's huge. staying here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's just staying in the. It's just staying in the main room. The Hellraiser statue. It's uh, the the pillar. He's probably it's gonna crazy, sell with dude. the house if he ever sells the house. I his house is a blast, but I could never live in a house like that. It looks so claustrophobic. Yeah, he has quite a bit of stuff. Like it's just isn't it? It's just really cluttered. Like it, I, I couldn't deal with it. It'd be fun to go to and hang out, or like be like a place where you, you know, you chill and be, but like I would have to. I like having a normal house, like outside of my little rooms and stuff, and just kind of a. There's neutral certain space. rooms that I would like to have cluttered, but there's other rooms that I would have, like to have nothing in. So that makes sense. I don't know, man. I can you imagine just sitting in that living room, with a glass of wine, maybe some sherry, a la Frazier, pondering and Frazier. looking back on, looking at the regrets in life, and you're looking at that fucking uh, Hellraiser fucking pillar, knowing you probably spent a hundred thousand oh, dollars in that, and you're like, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I regret. I regret this. He spent a lot of money, dude. It was a ridiculous Hun number. It got to be about maybe like ten. You think oh, it's no. more than that? 
Oh, it was a ridiculous number. It really? Was a, ridicu- a ridiculous fucking figure. Oh, Jesus. Ridiculous. He's, he's got some pieces that he spent insane money on. Insane. Space. We're not talking, te- yeah, there's $10,000 pieces and stuff like that, but he's got some stuff that was just insane money. And I, if you like actually factored in and added up everything he owns, I wonder how much his whole collection is worth. You know? He's, he can retire. He's right. He should have just retired. I would sell it all. Well, 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 hopefully he doesn't have an earthquake or something in, in California and just you know collapse. Well, he's got to have. He's got to have it insured. Oh God, I, I would. Hope. You have a collection like that. You got to have insured. Can you imagine being like a guy like that and having a collection and living in Florida? Oh no, yeah. You know, I mean, get washed away by the storms. I, his collection is worth more than his house. Yeah, he, I bet you he's got to pay. He's got to pay like hundreds of dollars a month just to insure that shit. I would imagine. Yeah, that's crazy. Let's see here. Joey's Uh, trying to sneak back in. I know someone who tried to buy a ten grade Cal Ripken for three K got a crappy car with no grade. Yeah, you get ripped Uh, off on the the trading car market all the time on some of those like resell sites and stuff like that. I would never. I what I do. I, I work at a bank, and I let's just say I deal with a lot of stuff like that. Like people getting like scammed and shit like that, and I gotta kind of work through that, and it happens all the time. I would never do it. Yeah, my my brother's a huge card collector, and he uh, he does a lot of that stuff where PSA cards and slabs, pretty much everything. So, yeah, he's it, it is a bad a lot of bad people out there. So I have a question: What is the ultimate purpose of the little brother in this story? Because so he follows them to the carnival. He clearly sees that they, they go into the carnival and they don't come back when the rides ends, right? He knows, like, oh, something's weird. And even, like, the weird Frankenstein guy doesn't realize it. Like, oh, he's literally just shuffling people in the ride, and he should be greeting them when they come out, and nobody comes out. He's like, oh, I'll just go fucking have sex with the fucking uh, old bitch now and kill her. Uh, but anyway, he witnesses all this, and there's going to be a point where – um you know, the parents have to come pick him up and stuff like that. And you would think his whole purpose is to somehow save the day or tell the parents or something, but it ultimately goes nowhere because when he gets caught and the parents come and pick him up, there's a moment. It's when she's screaming through the fan Mm -hmm. in the fun house. They can't, I love that scene by the way. And it's really creepy and they can't, she it's like so close yet so far away. She can see them, but she can't hear through the fan he has a moment where he can save the day Mm -hmm. and he's like, he's thinking, you know, get him home and get him to bed or whatever. And he just thinks to himself, like, I'm going to get you back. He thinks back to the sister threatening to get him back. And this little bitch is like, yep, I'm not going to say nothing. Yeah. I'm not going to say nothing. That's ridiculous. And and I'm thinking, okay, so what is the point of the kid? Because the kid didn't. It's almost like he was a red herring. This kid's yep. a plant here. He's going to solve it. He's going to help him. He's kind of on the tail the whole time. And then the parents actually come. This is this is salvation. And he has that moment where, hey, they're in there, and he doesn't. So it's almost like they just troll you, like red herring, like fuck, psych. Because <laughs> um, it goes nowhere, right? Yeah, and they, I mean, they obviously, they could have added a little bit more with him. And they could have. But, but why also... Why does this kid have such a chip on his shoulder? Like, oh, she said she's going to get me back. Well, I'm getting her back. Like, you started it, bitch. You sexually assaulted your sister in the shower. She got upset. She said some shit. You deserve to get back. You know, you deserve to get. I I would think. Yeah, that that whole sequence. It doesn't make any sense. No, I I, I hear you. Why why is this fun house? This fun house seems so much bigger on the inside now. Like, look at all this stuff. That's pretty sweet, dude. Yeah, it's awesome. It's really well lit too. Yeah, you think it'd be pitch yeah. black, dude. I mean, you think they had a little more strobe? I mean, they have some, but no, it's just I. I think it's, I think it's more lit than what it would be. It's obviously movie lit. Yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah, I'd love to hang out in there overnight, dude. I even I'd love to those animatronics still going, skis oh, back yeah. there, and it's creepy, dude. I love it, but yeah, I always love to go to like the. Uh, I think when we went last time to. Uh, down in Arizona, we went to the old mining town where they have like the the people like playing piano, like the fake guys playing piano and all that shit. Oh, did we actually see one that was open? I don't Maybe, remember. Yeah, I think I think I mean they usually have all those. I like all that cheesy shit, yeah. dude. 
We went to uh, we we had Goldfield. The, yeah, we had the thing where like uh, you put in a dollar or whatever, and it tells you. Uh, I don't know if anybody if anybody has ever been out to Arizona, uh, Superstition Mountain. There's like the the mining town of Goldfield that's like right at the bottom of the mountain, and you know it's one of those like. I think they went there on Ghost Adventures. It's one of these like haunted places, and there's like a haunted saloon, and that's where like Zach Bagans went to. And we couldn't go. There's like a hotel and a saloon that are haunted, and they were both closed. Yeah, because it was like it was like so hot, and they had no business, and like half the place was like closed down, so we couldn't go in the saloon. But we did go to one restaurant where there's like one guy running the whole show. Like, what's your order? And he like run back in the kitchen, tuna sandwich. Remember, I asked yeah. him, he was like, oh, what's on? Remember, I asked him, he's like, oh, what's on the tuna sandwich? Tuna and bread. <laughs> he, like he runs goes back and- he goes from the bar and then he runs back to the kitchen and he makes the food and then we ended up getting a picture with him at the end and he pulls out his real pistol his real revolver and put it puts it in aaron's face it's for so a picture funny. dude i'm like this guy was a this guy was a character I, and uh, yeah he, i'm he, surprised he, he didn't knock his fucking block off dude he was carrying he was a character he was wacky and and they you know they had no business it's just like a couple of people in there uh just like you see in like these movies or whatever and yeah he's he's packing like a real john wayne pistol on the side of him and yeah he's running around doing everything and literally i didn't know the guy was actually going to be making my sandwiches i don't think he washed his hands uh, it not. was it and I'm like, it felt hot in there, and I've got flies all over my face. Yeah. And this, because it's a saloon, it's like a saloon type joint, and you know, the food was very average. Terrible. The guy was great. The guy, <laughs> the guy, the guy was just like Beer telling all these crazy stories. Yeah. He was from Afghanistan, wasn't he? Iranian or Afghan? The bartender. Uh huh. Yeah. Really. Yeah. He was an old man, but he had like an accent. And I asked him where he's from, and he said he was like originally Iranian or Afghan, one of those something. Yeah. Hundred mm. percent. But he was like cowboy dressed. Yeah. He had lived here a long time. Uh, but yeah, with like, hey, can we get a picture with you? Because and I, I saw some other person do it too. I'm like, oh, he's really nice. And we, yeah, we go behind the bar and we're all posing. They're like, oh yeah, it's like it, it, he must eat it up. Like yeah, it's tourism. And then for the second picture, he pulls out his gun like for a pose and puts it on me. Like oh, <laughs> put, yeah, put a know, like, six shooter I, in your face. I I, I probably put I it in my mouth it's... too. Like all right, oh, <laughs> dude, I wonder if it was loaded, man. That's crazy. oh, why wouldn't it be? Oh, Why dude. would you carry it around? You know, I don't know. You know, you can you can open carry, dude. To, to I, mess with the local or mess with the uh, out of towners. I don't know. It's funny though. It'd be funny, dude. Like he could have got. What if he shot the ground by dance, motherfucker? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> as you're leaving, <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right. I'm okay. Hey, underpants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's that? <laughs> vacation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Vacation. Okay, so uh, first victim takes a while for these guys to start getting killed. Yeah, uh, we're an hour and ten minutes in, and the first friend gets killed. He's getting uh, he's getting noosed. He gets dragged up there, and he's hanged. Uh, it's pretty cool. He ends up coming back around on the ride, and the buddy like puts an axe in his head. That the whole time I'm thinking like, God, dude, how could you like? Because I would I'd be thinking to myself like, maybe he wasn't all the way dead, and I just killed him. Yeah. You never know. No, would, you would. You know. It's not like you're watching the movie and you, you, but no, it's like, uh, uh, like maybe he was just out of it. Like, oh no, nobody say anything about this. It's never happened. I still sound. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the parents are here to pick him up. Uh, he's all passed out. Looks like he got drugged date date, you know, Fr- Frank Frankenstein got a hold of him. Just like, uh, he did the, uh, fortune teller. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Reminds me of this Diddy story I just read, dude, on the World Star Hip Hop that channel. I'm reading all that shit too. That's crazy. I like this this post they put. Like, uh, there's a guy coming out there saying that uh, he heard from one of the label execs that uh, (laughs) um, they said that uh, he made Usher when he was living with them. He got rushed to ICU because uh, Diddy made his booty bleed. I, of course, you don't know where the facts are at this point. Like, people are saying shit now, and these are people in the camp. You know, like, well. Yeah, it's hard to tell, but uh, I, I I like to think that's true because it's funny. It's not funny. I take it back. It's terrible. It's horrible. The only reason why I'm taking the piss out on Usher is because if that shit is true, Usher, after the fact, when he was an adult, he discovered Justin Bieber and he handed Bieber over to Diddy to stay with Diddy for a couple of days. So if that shit happened to Usher. Usher is just as guilty, and it means he partook and got corrupted because he handed over Bieber. Yeah, I'm just saying. I've already thought about this. If anybody you should feel bad for, it's probably the Biebs. 
Because if he got fucked up, you know. I mean, his booty bleed, dude. <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That doesn't that sound like something to be that would be in the Diddy click. That's how they yeah, would word it. Yeah. May he booty bleed. <laughs> that is that the is that a medical term? You don't think it was rectal damage or something? May his booty bleed. Oh, Dude, I I eat hot Cheetos and my booty bleeds. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't want to take sit out of the, this. You sit on the toilet too long, you get those uh those hemis that start popping up on you, bro. We went full uh, bidet. Next time you come over, I have a I bidets. have a bidet. Well, we have multiple bidets, and uh, I can never go back. I love the feeling of it's, it. Well, I don't know why I love the feeling of it, but oh, you don't love the feeling of getting clean, dude. I fucking bend over, I give it a little spread, and I my I like chug the water with my butt, dude, and I spit it out like, oh, that's good. <laughs> like let's let's give it the let's give it a real rinse. Come on, dude. It's the butt chug, man. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I felt is, that shit is, out. Is dude. there people oh. still in here listening? <laughs> I don't think I used the word felt correctly. That's not. Anyway, whatever. Uh, I'm just speaking being, of that. Uh... Go to the comments because I, I got to hit the little boy's room. <laughs> All right, hurry up. I'm just being provocative. So th- I love this scene. This is where she's screaming at the fan. Can you imagine how harrowing this would be? Knowing your parents are right there and you're screaming and you're screaming and they can't hear you. And this little prick, look, he's looking up at her with demon eyes like I could have saved the day. And then he has that like he remembers. I'm going to get you back. I'm going to get you back. What a piece of trash, man. I hate this kid. So, like, I don't know if his character is not for not because the arc essentially goes nowhere, but maybe it was also intended to be just a red herring because the whole time you watch it, you think he is going to somehow save the day or he's going to play a part because what other reason does he exist and to follow him to the carnival? So, anyway, this is a great scene. Really creepy. So, we have Blondie. Uh, she's waking up. She's in like some duct or whatever. And there's a fan there kind of reminds me of alien three, right? Where they're dealing with all those shoots and those fans and those ducks. And remember that one scene where the guy that's like mopping up, he falls in the big uh, commercialized fan or they think he falls into it, but it's like the alien. Um, that's what it reminds me of. Obviously this is like a, a dinky fan and that one was really big, but she wakes up. Go boy is going to be here and she's going to try and do everything she can to get him to, you know, not, uh, not, not hurt her even go as far as to, uh, sort of play on his horniness because they all witnessed, right. His, his kind of sad state and trying to get the play from, uh, Xena and, um, it doesn't go well for her, man, but he takes the bait and she's going to stab him, dude. And I don't know, I feel bad because he's clearly a villain and he's clearly doing some bad things but it's kind of like kind of like a jason character or maybe not even like that or maybe like a leatherface and i wouldn't even say as malicious as leatherface he just seems like a child he seems like he's stunted and he doesn't know any better i was just telling him this scene we were talking about it and i feel genuinely bad because i know he does bad stuff yeah but like she's going to lure him in with the sex, right? Cause she's witnessed, you know, their whole deal with Xena and she's going to stab him. But I don't even, I, I, I picture like he's like a kid. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know any better. So that's why I feel bad for him. So I, as far as like killing people and maybe, maybe he's the one that killed the friend. I'm assuming he killed the friend. It wasn't the dad. He was telling, I don't know if it was the dad or we, I don't really know. It was, him. but yeah, but he's just doing what the dad is telling him and the way he was raised. And even now when she tries to bait him in, like, Hey, don't hurt me. Like I can, I can give what you what you want. You don't even have to pay me. Well, he just, if he's a kid that doesn't know any better, he's getting offered and he's taking the offer. Maybe he doesn't compute that. She's super scared. You know, I don't know. I'm just, I'm trying to like, I don't feel bad for him. <laughs> Fucking man. I do. He's got that drool. dude. He's got that cum coming down from his lip. Just disgusting. Screw him, man. Oh no, I feel bad, dude. Yeah, look, look, he's just you getting feel a little bad for, You feel bad for Leatherface too. I no, I was actually I compared him to Leatherface, and I think Leatherface is worse. Yeah, I Leatherface is worse. He's more malicious. I I think this guy 
is uh, I think he's a Frankenstein character for sure. I think he's a sad state and um, he never had a fair shake. And it, I don't know, man. I don't think he really knows any better. No, he, he probably doesn't because his dad is a piece of shit. And I, and I feel bad when he gets stabbed, too, because for all I know, he thinks, oh, this girl was really like for all I know in his brain. Hey, she was inviting me and she's being honest. And then he just gets stabbed. And of course, he kills her. And maybe he just beats her. Maybe he assaulted her because she's all it, they don't really get into it. Um, but I mean, maybe he's just beating the shit out of her because look, he's got his hand up there and he's clawing her. See? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say he didn't assault her. I'd say him just like swatting him with his claws, and they show his fingers bloody. And then when we see her again, she's got the claws everywhere. I would like to think he just killed her. I I want to I want to think my boy is better than that. Oh my and god! He did. And uh, and you know what? More more importantly, we all can't forget that he literally just got his nut like 30 minutes ago, so he's probably not even too horny. You know what I mean? Because he, he this got, freaking cyborg man, this yeah, this thing. Z, he got dude. Zena Zena gave him his nut like twenty minutes ago. He should be good. Oh god, he can come back after like five minutes, probably. Oh, that guy. That, yeah, probably. that was probably his first time. <laughs> so, right, right. No, I know you. Know, I got reserves. Been, no, they've implied that he's done it to other girls and locals. You know that's what he's doing to the girls. Yeah, but I mean, you know? honestly, I mean. If he, if, my man, my man, my man ain't a first timer. My man knows what he's knows what's up, dude. He knows what he's doing. I mean, he's a pro. if you're that, if you look like a fucking goat, I'm sure that you can handle more than once. What do we got here? Um, let me get caught up here. Thomas, my parents have a huge NASCAR collection that ranges from everything, die cast replicas and clothing. I'm so jealous about it. I was never big into NASCAR, but I have like an uncle that would do the NASCAR thing. Sometimes I know a lot of people are really, really into that. And I never did the baseball card thing. Um, you know, I, I try not to have too much of that stuff because it's just too expensive. I have so many hobbies. It's tough, man. I have. I've got to thin it down. I, I've already stopped buying toys. Um, I haven't bought. In, I mean, I bought that black gives way to blue vinyl that I showed you. But that, I haven't bought in very much records. I, I've just had to put the stop, dude. I just there's no money these days. Did you get did you get the uh, Ninja Turtles like the te uh, Technodrome and all that stuff? That got I'm released? telling you, I. I stopped. So I have no, so, I have no room. So any of that intrigue you though? Did you think about picking any of that up? I mean, it's really cool to me. I just don't have the room. Like, I feel like the amount of stuff I have, it fills out the spaces perfectly. I don't want to add any more to it. Yeah. And I feel like if I did, if I really did, I'd have to sell some stuff to make room. I just like my brother and me, Didi, if you want something cool, you got to get something. You got to give up something hype. Yeah. Cool. Not my Zo posters. Oh, right. so this black Lons man, that dental game. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, there's always so much space. And um, I always thought, Zakito says, I always thought he was behind those Pac and Biggie killings, used them as a ladder to get to the top. Oh, the uh, Diddy. I don't know, man. Um, there's a lot of crap coming out about that stuff. It'll be interesting to see what happens with all this shit. Yeah. He'll have a, he'll have a movie someday, unfortunately. Well, I thought 50 Cent was coming out with some documentary soon, so there'll be probably nothing new, but. Is, is 50 Cent an authority to be able to, like, produce a documentary on Diddy? Well, I think I think he was their boys or something. I don't know. I don't think he ever was. He's like shit talks him. He said, like, well, you know. Well, they used to. I think he used to hang out or go to his parties and shit, though. Yeah. Captain Howdy, what's up? Zach looks different. Is that uh, what? <laughs> Are you referring to Riverman? I'm so confused. Go over to Kami Gang. I'm sure he's hanging out there. I'm so confused. What do you mean Zach looks different? You act like you've never seen Riverman. I've been here before. for two River years, brother. <laughs> Longer than that. Well, but yeah. But Riverman was on here when Zach was on here, like at the same time. Speaking of which, I we got to get like Josh James and everybody on for like a big powwow yeah. chat. I want to. I would love for those guys, and I haven't talked to Josh in a while. I'd like for him to come He's on like, a live quiet. stream. Same with Goat. Well, Josh James, yeah, Goat has done a lot less, and Josh James, I think he just he, he just becomes work. He just became work focused, and uh, you know, so and he got engaged. If you know, and so you know. Basically, what happened to all of us, what happened to me, but I'm still keeping it going. But I'm <laughs> now the most I got to do is sleep on the couch every now and again to entertain you guys. 
I sleep on the couch. Sometimes all the I time, get a little. Man. There's nothing wrong with that. I get I get a little little lip. I get a little bit of lip behind the scenes because I want to keep coming back and entertaining you guys and watching movies with my boy River. Right, so it's for you guys. You're acting like I don't sleep on the couch every night. Come on. <sighs> no, I I love this stuff. But anyway, uh, I was talking to Zach recently. We want to do cinema anima at some point. I just I got to find time. Um, sometime soon. I even picked out a movie I'd like to do. I just. I got to get caught up on editing. We got all these commentaries. I still got to get through and October is going to be big. Um, Diddy house. You can come in. <laughs> Take a black light to his house, dude. Oh God. Well, he, he has beds in his, uh, he has a basketball court in his house. I saw and he had beds in there. So, Oh, you always have to do it. All those rappers have to have basketball courts in their house. Yeah. So. Let me see here. So, sorry. So, did the Matthew McConaughey old guy get killed yet? Uh, shit. I'm... Oh, she's looking for yeah. him. He got ran off. Yeah, he ran off. And first of all, he impaled the dad. Mm-hmm. Right on on that thing that was sticking out of the wall. And then like an idiot, he goes up to him to the front of him to try and get like uh, the whatever from him. Why would you do that? Because, of course, he's going to pull him into the blade. Go to the side. Like, like, get what you have to get from him on the side of it. Don't stand right in front of the impaler thing so he can uh, and pull you in. But anyway, he kills him. Goat boy comes out and, you know, he's got a gun at this point. And then they run off and he runs off into the shadows. And now he just comes back and this fucking bozo thing has him and he's dead. And I don't know if that blood on his uh, abdomen is from the impale thing. Because I don't know if he actually got stabbed or if it's I a think, gunshot. I think it's the impale, but... But how did he die then? Because he had a gun. Yeah. We hear a gunshot. When he, he runs off, we hear a gunshot. So I I always assumed he got shot. And like somehow Go Boy took it and he could fit those giant turtle fingers like in the gun and shoot him. It's a little confusing. They don't really explain that. You don't have to explain it. But now we're just down to the final girl. And uh, we're gonna see Goat Boy kind of get his demise, which I th- I feel bad about. I don't. Todd's got no heart. No, idea. not for Goat Boy. What does uh? Don't make me translate, bro. Uh, La Plume de Ma Tante Akuna Matata. Akuna Matata. Oh, it's is that Exorcist stuff? Oh, yeah, it's Exorcist for Captain Howdy. Duh. <laughs> the substance is really good. I've I've heard about that a lot, man, and I've been seeing a lot of stuff. Yeah, I've movies. been yeah, I've been wanting to see that I, too. A good body I horror. Check. Yeah, man, and uh, we're living in this era where now Dennis Quaid and Demi Moore are doing horror movies because that's where their careers are at. But I'm here for it, man. Absolutely. I think I, I hear it's really good. You know, a lot of those guys will. That's where you can get quality work, man. It's supposed to be. It's the same director who directed Revenge, which I really like. That woman who directed that. I don't know if I that saw Revenge. A, I thought you did, or maybe did it was I? Zach, but it's a, it was a shutter. It was a sh- shutter picked it up and it was a shutter original, uh, but you can buy physical. It's, it's really good. And it's just a meat and potatoes revenge flick. Obviously it's very inspired by the revenge. Gotcha. Fix that yeah. Came I know, before I know it. this movie. I don't think I've saw oh, it though. It's really good though. I mean, you know what you're getting in. Yeah. You know what you're getting. It's a revenge flick. The great revenge. Yeah. It's a great revenge movie, but it's just it's very satisfying. It's done really well. I really, really liked it. I, I would totally own it. But if you still have Shudder, watch it on Shudder. Yeah, I, I, I still do. I I need to get back on there. I just haven't had time to get on Shudder. And you and like those movies, man, you absolutely hate these guys in it. Um, If I remember correctly, I think she's like a sugar baby and she's like fucking around with some like rich like tech tech type guy like more middle-aged guys and you know he's taking her to like his island and his like private like you know he's you know spoiling her uh yacht his fucking yacht bros Mm -hmm. shit goes wrong and she has to take care of business and they you know it's the same it's the same old formula but it's very very good zakito said he's good in the substance everyone's good in it yeah i gotta see it man uh i still have to watch we gotta watch maxine yeah when's maxine come out because i want to do next i pre-ordered it from i think it's on i pre-ordered the 4k on walmart because i think it's like 24 bucks or something so i it should be coming next week 
I would like to, gosh, I really want to make time to do, I know you want to do all of the Ty West movies, but I think we got to make time for Maxine. I don't know, like as far as October goes, I would love to do that ASAP. You know, it's a new movie. I still haven't seen it. I'd be generally Pretty excited controversial to do it. Pretty controversial because like half the people love it and half the people hate it. So I, in my opinion, um, the next flick we have to do, we got to do The Hitcher. Yeah, we got to do Hitcher. We got we got to do the Hitcher, and I think we got to do Maxine. I think those are I think those are must for October. Okay, that's I mean I think so. I think we should strike it while they're hot. I don't think anybody's going to be talking about the Hitcher more than they are now about a blue. You know what I mean? It's just, a lot of people are going to be talking about it right now because and, and this is the most this is the most interest it's going to have. Yeah, because it's the Hitcher. Nobody was talking about the Hitcher before the second site release, so we might as well. And uh, we both got sets, and I'm excited to to crack. It I haven't even cracked mine either, man. I. No, I ain't got time for that, dude. I work a million hours a week, dude. I I have like a stack of movies I still need to watch, but now I'm gonna do my best. It's like I think because I think uh, Freddy's Nightmares is gonna drop Monday. Okay, and then I don't know, man. I might even put this out because it, at this point it doesn't matter because uh, I've still got the Tales from the Crips both demon knight and bordello blood oh you still but have the, oh yeah you haven't put those out yet i, I haven't dude th- those take me so fucking yeah. long you have no idea yeah, okay <laughs> so um and i've got to get the video i got to get the movies ripped mm-hmm. i couldn't even find my elgato i got to look for it this weekend and figure out how to set that up because i couldn't find it to talk to you about it today but uh yeah i've got to rip those so i can get those get those edited and uh anyway so since i already have a fresh you already have this ripped for funhouse yeah it's tempting to do funhouse first just because it, I could Bef- knock it before, out faster. Before what? The uh, tails. The t- the tails. Yeah, do do this first because this is more uh, Halloween themed. But I mean, like I, they're all going to come out in October. I just think it'll be quicker for me to go it since I've already got all the assets. So, what's more than likely is going to happen is Monday. You're definitely going to get Freddy's Nightmares because that's almost done. You're going to get that Monday, which that was a lot of fun. And then this is probably what's you're going to see next Friday, and then the week after that, Monday and Friday, we're going to get tails uh one and two and then that should basically leave us open for uh let me see yep so that means the last two yeah the last two weeks we'll still have two weeks of october and then by that time we will have streamed uh hitcher we will have streamed maxine and those will definitely be out at some point in the last couple of weeks and then you know we're gonna do some streams and stuff and i i wouldn't even mind knocking out a couple more episodes of something you know whatever but yeah every, everything should uh line up pretty well for october okay yeah because we're just starting october that's why i needed to slow down this week because i feel like i've got enough already with what we already planned to do to, f- to fill it out i gotta get caught up i didn't even realize he didn't have the tails i'm out. i'm yeah. doing so many fucking episodes lately yeah. but uh but like i said the way i just painted it we're covered for october we got what we've already got and if we do hitcher we do Maxine. We're going to do some fun streams and stuff that I don't think have to add to any of that stress on me. So that'll be different. Uh, but I even think we could do one more sesh of like tails or whatever you want to do. And then we'll be fleshed out because then, yeah. So we're, we're looking good. We're looking good. I just got to do all this. Shit. I'm looking forward to seeing Maxine. I Yeah, me too. I, I'm really looking forward to watching Hitcher. I, I haven't seen that movie in a minute, man. I love it. Yeah, it's been a while for me, too. Dude, I've, I can't watch this. Can't watch my boy get masked. Oh, God. End, oh, bad end him. him. Dude. Yeah, she should end him. She pull down his pants and give him one last handy for the road. For that uh, rainbow road, dude, she's sending him on. That'd be like, what, his fourth or fifth time tonight? Or this uh, movie? He only, he only fucking lost it once, dude. Just once, dude. <laughs> That's probably getting him bricked up, dude. He's like, I kind of like this. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Getting strung up. But, yeah, it's a pretty brutal yeah, death. Yeah, it's, it's a cool death scene, man. I, I, I always enjoyed this ending. But there's something about there's something about him being helpless. And like I said, I generally still feel like he's this um, he's like a cornered animal. Mm-hmm. And I feel like he's just attacking because he's a cornered animal. And he's going to get ground up. And you hear him screaming, dude. I, I hate it. I, I don't like it. I feel bad for him. I just want to love him. Just want to give him a hug. It's gonna be okay. Like Sloss brother. He is like Sloss, uh, Sloss brother, dude. 
Sloth's brother needs to be investigated. Sloth love chunk. That's fucking yeah. weird. Yeah. <laughs> but he hit his little ears, dude. But Sloth is uh Yeah, he is like a sloth where sloth is 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 mentally stunted. He's a child. Mm-hmm. I feel like this guy is sloth. The only difference is well, I guess the Fratellis were assholes too. Yeah. The only the only difference is why Sloth was so lovable because they both had shit parents is uh the Goonies was a rated PG movie and this is an R movie. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's that's pretty much it. Yeah. And then uh yeah, she Next kills day. him. And she, well, yeah, was the sun already up? Because, or, like, how much time passed? Did she take a nap? Well, I mean, they spent the whole night there. I mean, they I mean, all, the, did, all the friends. Did it seem and... like, so, look, the, 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 the carnival probably ended by 10, maybe. Yeah. Maybe, maybe 11. But still, even if it ended at midnight, she's got, like, seven hours before the sun comes up, I would imagine. Uh, and did it seem like they killed seven hours? Yeah, I, I would you think could, so. But you could see the sun from in there. You could see the light. There's fans yeah, and all yeah, kinds of stuff. Yeah. So we didn't see the sun when she was killing uh, Goat Boy. So did the sun just come up from the time that she killed Goat Boy and come out there? Or did she take a nap? That's what I want to know. Took her she a while. Yeah. I'm going to take her a nap. I think she's solid in this. I, I really like the final girl. Yeah, and like I was telling when you went to go uh, take a piss, I was talking about you missed the scene where the boy was just like looking at the fan, knowing they're in there and choosing not to say anything. Like the same old uh, horror. She's like, he's always watching. Mm-hmm. See, they're still just kind of loitering around. None of these carny guys like tearing the place down or saying anything, which is kind of weird. You'd think somebody would be like, hey, are you okay? Who the hell are you? She looks like she got assaulted, but kind of a cool shot you know yeah showing, it's a great ending the whole carnival and everything and it's a great ending just her kind of walking away yeah. walking away and it makes you wonder uh what she obviously get she's she gets home does she hitch a ride and when she gets home to her parents house what does she do to her brother yep what does she do to that little shit because <laughs> again he has fucked her over and uh yeah do you tell dude all her all her friends are dead yeah do, do you do you ever think about that? Like, what happens after? Like, man, did they go to the cops? Like, what happened? So were, were they setting up for the next day, or were they tearing down? Oh, they were tearing down. For they the, were tearing down. The, the, okay. Yeah. You don't set up for the next day. You leave it there. Why would you do that? Why would you tear it down and set it up? I didn't know if they were cleaning up or what they were doing. They were no, they, down. They, 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 they were tearing it down to, to skip town. Um, but, yeah, anyway. Let's see here. <laughs> Captain Howdy, could you help an old altar boy, Aaron? I'm a Zachaholic. <laughs> what? I I don't. I how would you like me to help you? I don't understand. You want me to? You want Zach to fucking give you a hand job? What? I don't know, man. Yeah. Anyway, great movie, man. I think this is a fantastic flick. I. What do you rate this? Nine out of ten. Yeah, I would say it's a 9 out of 10 as well. Oh, what I was going to say was when I was talking about Hooper versus Romero, I always want to compare those two just because I, for some reason, they are they didn't come out at the same time. Obviously, Romero predates. Mm. But I'd say they were both hitting their pr- their peak at the same time. Yeah. And they both have, in my opinion, one huge claim to fame. And... I I always like kind of I think they're comparable as far as like their output and like what they have that's good cuz when I when I think about Hooper he's got this flick no he's he's got sorry everybody thinks about Texas Chainsaw Massacre that's the one but for for a lot of years I would always forget about the fun not forget about it but I'd always like not acknowledge it like oh yeah that is Hooper too yeah 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 because because I'm thinking like oh man he's just I've always thought he's really just got Texas Chainsaw Mm -hmm. a one trick pony and obviously Texas Chainsaw 2 is good but that kind of always made me kind of put him in the Romero camp because to me Romero had night and dawn and day he he strayed too far from that and it never really went too well so but no I, I don't know Hooper's got maybe Hooper does have more I'm trying to stack it up like who's got the who, who, if you pit them together, pit them against each other, who has the stronger overall body of work? That now, is, I think probably Hooper. Uh, I so think. I think 
I think there is no movie on either side that's as strong as Dawn. I think Dawn is probably my favorite. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but that, yeah, yeah, Dawn and TCM are right there. But but do you like but which one's better? Oh, I like Dawn better, but yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Dawn to me is the top. But you know, Romero, he's got his dead trilogy. We're not going to talk about Land. Uh, but what else has he got that I, that I like? Yeah, I've grown to like Martin. I appreciate Martin. Martin Bruiser, Bruiser's entertaining. Bru- I like Knight Rider. I know you don't like it. I don't like Knight Rider, but you know, Martin Bruiser's solid. But he's got you know, and then Hooper's got uh, the first two TCMs, the Fun House, Salem's what Lot. Is, Salem's Lot. I mean, Poltergeist. But there's the debate. Did he really? <laughs> how much of that was really him? Well, I mean, now if, it, if his if name's you, on if, director, I'm, I'm. If you want to throw Poltergeist in there, it starts tipping the scale, because I I feel like if you just want to say TCM one two in the Fun House, okay, he's standing pretty tall with. He's standing pretty neck and neck with Romero as far as like the high caliber flicks. And then he's going to have some okay ones. But if you want to throw a poltergeist in there, it's starting to weigh in Hooper's favor a bit. But what else does Hooper have that I'm forgetting about? Oh, Freddy's Nightmares episode one. I don't think T- so. Yeah, TCM two, Invaders from Mars. I don't remember it. I don't think I saw that. Uh, Pol- you know what I'm saying, though? I feel like they have very similar output as far as yeah. like, the quality. It's like nobody, it, they just seem like contemporaries to me. But anyway, Flick is great. Thank you guys uh, so much for joining us. Uh, so, what is the plan? We're still filling it out next week. I know yeah, Todd and I talked about we'll a certain stream, out, yeah. but I really want to do a stream the week after that when we get our uh, status back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I not have this? like this the whole no, time i don't think so oh well doesn't matter right. uh anyway but yeah be on the lookout so uh check out our uh tales from the crypt episodes one and two those are out um if you're watching this after the fact you will have freddy's nightmares episode one and you might even might even have some demon night but anyway subscribe like the channel all that good stuff be on the lookout for what we got going on we're going to do some stream action in the next couple of weeks and hang out with you guys to celebrate october be nice to get a couple of the other guys on board yeah uh, maybe we should like uh try and plant those seeds but yeah leave a comment man that helps us out more than anything else and uh start let us know what you guys want to see i don't know how much room we're going to have in october because we kind of have it mapped out i think a lot for the most part um, maybe if you guys have some suggestions on what we should do for a TV episode, because I think we'll have room for another session of those. So I don't know, maybe obviously Friday 13th, the series, maybe that's the one we should do. Yeah, that's a, that's a possibility there. So we'll figure it out, but let us know. Uh, Todd wants you to like us on X. Yep. He wants to chat you guys up on X and uh, what else? Instagram. We're on all that crap, man. If you want to support us, throw us a coffee on uh, Patreon. Otherwise I'll say it again. We are, um, as of this recording, 12 days away for getting our monetization back. Fuck YouTube, man. We got thrown into prison. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, So the more you guys tune in and help us out, that's awesome. But have a great weekend. We love you. See you guys. Be safe. Bye.